What's up everyone, welcome back to WX Garage. Today, we are fixing something on my car that I kind of broke. Um, <laughs> this is also something that I wanted to do for a while. Um, Kyle already upgraded uh, his audio system. Um, I did a little bit with mine, I just did speakers. I did an inline amplifier, but um, comparatively, he has the really nice uh, head unit. He's got um, really, really nice speakers. He's got the sub in the back, and his audio system sounds 10 times better than mine does. Mine might, my car would be, might be a, a little faster, but uh, his car sounds way better for uh, all of the audio he does. Um, even his like phone calls, when I call him and he's in the car, it, it sounds really crisp. So um, we're gonna be fixing that today. And we're going to be going with, um, it's not exactly the cheapest on the market, but it's definitely a really, really good product. It's the um, Android Auto, most, the, the most recent version uh, eye doing head unit. So it is a Android based head unit. So essentially it's an Android tablet as your screen um, with the really beefed up audio system in the back, lots of features, really crisp Bluetooth connection. Um, and most importantly, I, I'm pretty sure this one does have Android Auto. So um, I guess we'll figure that out. I personally, I don't really plan on using Android Auto. I like using my phone um, just via Bluetooth. Um, I don't like having the, the phone and having to, you know, use it. But um, Anyways, yeah, let's get going. It's pretty simple process. Um, I've already pulled my head unit out once, so I'm not gonna do some super, super in-depth how-to, but um, you guys can find some online tutorials, but it's basically just two bolts behind the, the back of the head unit, and then pull out your, um, your two little vents, AC vents on the top, pull those out, undo the clips, and then pull the head unit out, undo the clips. And let's, um, let's go through what came in this package. So I doing, we got, all right. Very well packaged by the way. Um, this right here, one of the reasons why I'm really excited about this kit. As you guys can see, this kit comes with so many different little attachments. So I got a, an extra microphone if I don't like the quality of the one that's built in. We got a plug and, they even came come with pop, uh, these little um, trim piece poppers, um, which is really cool. You got, I believe this is your GPS antenna if you want to use it for that. We have our different audio cables, uh, and then we have an extra USB, which is great. Um, we actually have three extra USBs, or two extra, that we can wire in. Um, let's see. So if we really wanted to, we can run two different USB for power and just sending information to the head unit itself. And then this is the magic right here. This is all, all these harnesses here are basically just plug and play solutions where um, you're not really splicing anything. Uh, I think the only time you have to splice uh, is if, basically they come with these like extra, like an, like an antenna, things like that. Um, little extra attachments if you need those, but from what I've seen on mine, it's all just straight up plug and play. Which for me is kind of a relief because there's no way I'd be able to figure all that electronics out. But here's the actual unit itself. And the matte black trim, let's see if we can get this. There we go. Looks really, really nice. Um, again, from what I've seen online, the fitment is really, really good. So. Uh, what I'm going to go in and do is I'm just going to pull out my stock head unit um, and then we're going to come back here to the table and just retrofit all the other pieces that need to go into the new unit um, and then maybe try to figure out some of the wiring a bit before we hop back in the car. Basically I had a, a little accident here guys. This is the stock head unit. It has a crack in it. Still works and everything but this is really cheap plastic. Um, what happened was I was driving and <laughs> um, it wouldn't turn on after the car did. So I just, uh, it was flickering a little bit. So I was like, oh, the power connection in the back might be a little off. So I was doing, you know, this and then this, trying to get it shifted. And I just did one little boop, not like a punch, just a little back of the hand boop, trying to get it to shift a little bit and it cracked. So um, I'm glad that I got this opportunity. It came at a really opportune time. And um, yeah, let's get this, let's get this out. So the glove box is already removed. Um, the next is just a, a 10 millimeter bolt. Uh, in the back here 
behind the steering column, and then another one back there. Um, and then I'm also gonna pop this out. So we got a, there's a bunch of stuff to disconnect here. We got the uh, AC control module. Bing, bang, boom. There's one. Um, I I need anything else off of this if I remember correctly it's just those these brackets and the um yeah we're just gonna be pressing these back down into the new one perfect Now we're just going to do the, um, the AC or the AC controls. Just going to be using those same four screws that we used. And then the last thing we gotta do, I think, is just switch over these uh, these buttons, which we can uh, just pop out here, put straight through. There's one. The other one, let me just pop it straight out this way. Straight back in. And then same thing with this guy. Perfect. Nice. Oh, I'm really excited. This is actually going super, super smoothly. So while we're here, we might as well start working on all of these Harnesses. I don't think we even actually use these uh, these um, mounting plates things. All right, let's go figure it out. We got this lovely mess of cables. Oh, if I could, for the rest of my life, never have to work on electricity or anything like that, I would take that in a heartbeat. But thanks to iDoing, they did a, a pretty decent job with um, labeling these connections. Um, pretty sure we just connect into all of these existing factory wires. Okay, 
All right, so this is working. Um, reverse works. Okay, that's cool. A few moments later. Okay guys, we are now a couple days later. The head unit has been fully installed. Everything is working perfectly. Um, I had a little bit of trouble um, getting this installed uh, the other night. It was getting dark. It got darker a little quicker than I expected. It took a little bit longer. Um, I kind of did that to myself, but um, on the kit side, the actual eye doing head unit, it's pretty much seamless. The reason why I had a little bit of trouble is because I had extra wiring in there for my um, the Alpine inline amplifier, uh, which honestly at this point, I don't even know if it's necessary because that's how good the audio quality is coming out of the head unit here. And I'll, I'll show you guys all the functions in just a second, but um, basically I had to, um, the, the harness is coming from the back of the, of the car. Plugged, some of them plug directly into the back of this head unit, that eye doing head unit, which is amazing. Um, but because I had spliced extra stuff into it, into those in line, it kind of shortened their length. Um, I did that installation when I first got the car and I just really didn't know what I was doing. So um, the reason why it was a little more complicated than it was is just entirely on me. So, um, if you did this kit yourself, I honestly don't think that you would have anywhere near as much of an issue as I did. I think it would take half the amount of time. Um, but anyways, um, just to show you guys a quick little bit about the, the fitment. It is absolutely perfect. Seamless. I have full, uh, you know, nice normal seam here. Uh, full use of these vents, all these buttons work, everything works exactly how it should. I didn't have any issues with buttons on my steering wheels. Uh, well, yeah, everything works. So now that that's said and done, let's show you guys uh, a couple things about this, how it works, some of its functions, why it's unique. Um, First off, let me show you guys how quickly, let's see if I get that to focus again, how quickly this turns on. So key in, instantly on. I don't know, you guys, let me show you guys this. How incredible is that? It is on pretty much instantly. And it's ready for my Bluetooth on my phone. So let's go back to home here. So I have it set on, uh, night mode um, so it's just a little bit darker uh, just for you guys let me um, turn the brightness up so you guys can see it a little bit better perfect uh, so here's the home screen you got your media so if you have any music playing uh, you can switch between radio or, or music on here um, let me turn the heat on actually it's actually really cold today um, that's actually one quick thing I did want to talk to you guys about was um, one of my concerns was because this was a, um, it's not a capacitive touch uh, screen. It's uh, the normal kind of screen, just like an iPhone or a, uh, or something like that. Um, as you guys can see, I just actually just got notifications on here from my, uh, got notifications from my phone about email and things like that, which is cool. Um, but because it's cold, uh, it's actually, it's, it's, it's under freezing today. It's, it says it's 34 on the car, but it's definitely colder than that. It's probably like 28. But um, as you can see, it's, it's not sluggish. It's perfectly fine. Works fine with it, with, with uh, even with cold hands and everything. So, um, yeah. So, just walk through some of the functions here. Um, we have our general pages and apps here that come pre-installed. Um, we can actually connect to Wi-Fi if we want to, but I've already, I haven't done that. Um, Bluetooth, we've registered our phone here, so I'll play you guys just some audio clips. Um, unfortunately, I can't play good music, but I can play some royalty-free music. Okay. We actually used this in one of our old videos, but, um... 
just so you guys see this and hear this. The one thing that I want to, I cannot, cannot express enough is how much better the audio quality is. Let me just let you guys listen for a sec. Yeah, so, absolutely amazing. Um, what's the biggest difference between, here, let me turn this down and just have it play in the background. Um, the biggest difference that I've noticed between the stock head unit and this head unit, of course, is the overall audio quality. So just the range of frequency response that this thing has, the, the internal amplifiers and, and the, the way that it encodes jet digital music from Bluetooth to its, its speaker lines is just so much better. The signal itself is cleaner. The, 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 the level, so the actual level of um, amplification with the, the in-head in unit uh, amplifier is so much better also. But just to show you guys, um, Subaru's old um, head unit, the stock head unit, has frequency bypass filters, which basically it cuts out the high end and it cuts out the lowest end and it just gives that center for just generic, garbled, bad sounding audio. Um, I'll show you guys a song that has some pretty deep bass and I don't have a sub in here, but with this head unit, I can really, really hear the bass and feel it. And also, oh, while this song is doing its little intro here, I'll go to the amplifier so you guys can see this. this is so customizable. And then you also have um, all these different little effects. As you guys can see, this isn't with bass the bass slider. This can go all the way up for gain. Um, I can turn the sub on, but that's specifically for a, a sub connection in the back, which is cool. But um, it's really just absolutely amazing. Um, I really hope that can get picked up on screen, but um, I'm not sure if it will. But um, cool. Here, let me um, let me drive around. I gotta go pick up my coffee, and then I'll be back, and I'll continue on with uh, some of this. So I got my coffee. I'm feeling good. Um, let's go over some of the other things about this that make it way better than um, way better than the stock one. Um, one thing uh, you guys sh I showed you guys before was how quickly this turns on. Um, overall, this is just so much snappier and faster. So when I when I try to connect my phone to Bluetooth, the Bluetooth system within this is so much better. I think it's a higher standard and more updated version of Bluetooth module than the old one was. So my phone connects like within seconds of me turning the car on. Whereas the Subaru uh, OEM one took about, I don't know, 15, 20 seconds usually. Um, talking about uh, some of those other connections, um, I was able to retain all of my steering wheel functions and you can see here, um, uh, there is a steering wheel, there we go, wheel key. And here are all the different functions I have programmed. Um, you can actually customize these functions to whatever you want them to be. So there's a bunch of different buttons on the steering wheel. If you don't like what they're being used for, you can change them around um, and basically program in your own. Um, I'm not going to be doing that right now because I like how it is. But um, the other main thing that's amazing about this head unit is the fact that it has Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Um, so I do have an Android. Um, I'm not a huge fan of 
being a sheep, so I don't buy Apple products. I'm kidding, for all of you guys who use Apple, that's completely fine, I understand. It's a good program. Anyways, so I plugged it in via USB here. Um, let's see if you guys can see that, but um, it's going up into the dash, the, um, the glove box. That's where I have my USB uh, dongles uh, routed, and there's actually two extra ones that it comes with, the kit comes with. So if I wanted to run more, if I wanted to run a dash cam or a uh, GPS unit, uh, quote unquote, a speed GPS unit, um, <laughs> a radar system essentially, um, you could do that through here seamlessly. Uh, I just plugged in my phone and it's just using Android Auto. Um, and so from here, um, I this is actually Waze. So if I wanted to plug in, um, or if I wanted to say, to go to, there we go. go let's go to uh, let's go to Bren Tuning and click on that and it automatically will route there. Um, absolutely seamless. It's very not laggy at all. As you guys can see this, it's, it's absolutely wonderful. Um, you have all of your normal alert system. You can tag things on the road. Um, I'm a huge supporter for um, using Waze, but um, you can also connect directly connect to your Spotify. So um, hands free uh, while the phone is charging and all that. I can just you know use my steering wheel controls. I'm not going to press play here because um, well I'll, I'll just mute it. But um, press play and. I'm pressing the, uh, using the steering wheel keys on my left hand. Um, hopefully, hopefully you guys can hear that click and see how fast it's snapping through some of these songs. Um, it's just amazing. And then I could pause. Now it's paused. Uh, if you guys listen to pop punk, let me know. But um, there's just so many cool functions about this that I just absolutely love. And I really cannot stress how much better the sound quality out of this system is coming through these speakers than the original stock head unit. The, the audio processing system in this unit and then also its internal amplifier are just an amazing combination for increasing the quality of your car's audio. Um, the other things I wanted to show off really quick, um, if you had an internet connection, you could go into each of these, um, but there's tons of different settings you can play around with. Um, you can change the look of how all of this, of uh, your, your screen looks, the way it's laid out. Um, I have it in permanent night mode, so um, even though the screen's super bright, even with sunglasses on, I have all these nod modules in dark gray instead of that bright white. So if you wanted it a little cleaner look, you can do bright white. Um, you can actually, I don't know if you guys can see this, but um, at night, these um, these on the left side are all, all illuminated with a specific color. So uh, I chose red and it perfectly matches all the different little red things like the uh, dials here and the, uh, the instrument cluster and all that uh, is all red as well. Um, you can change brightness on the fly if you need to, which is awesome. Um, so at night, if I'm driving, I'm like, oh, that's too bright. I can just click this button and it automatically dims it. So I can click that again and then go back up, which is amazing. Um, and then everything else pretty, basically works like an Android headphone. You have uh, the Android headphone, Android phone. Um, you have all of your recent apps that you've opened up. You can get rid of those. You can close them. Um, I, I think that a lot of people with these systems don't know about that. And so they... Um, they end up like wasting a bunch of their, their processing power, I guess, just by having thousands of these pages open or something like that. But uh, it has radio function. Um, you can, I don't know if you guys can see in the background when I swipe in the really fast, I have a, the, our WRX Garage logo in the background there as our, as our screen, which is cool. Um, but overall, it's just an absolutely seamless uh, solution, better audio quality. Um, those are all the pros. Those are, so those are all of the, the pros about this. Um, the only negative that I found that I kind of didn't realize before I bought this was um, you can't use the screen because it is capacitive touch just like a cell phone. You can't use the screen with a glove on unless you have one of those special gloves like uh, that has like the fingertip. So, uh, you know what I'm talking about, like the one that lets you use your phone without taking the glove off. So um, that's the only thing, but I think the result of that 
is that you have a much clearer, much better screen. Um, the old Subaru screen is kind of, it's like, it's a, uh, I forget the word, it's not capacitive touch, it's the other kind, but basically you're actually pressing in and touching a membrane, uh, the screen membrane that moves. Um, and that's how it, it registers that you press the button. Uh, that's, the, that's the stock Subaru one, but because you have that dual layer of plastic, the sun shines and bounces off of it so badly that it's really hard to see, especially in direct sunlight. It's also very dim. So um, you're, you're sacrificing just that one ability of being able to use this uh, with a glove on, or with, you have to take a glove off to use it. Um, you're kind of sacrificing that one function for all these other amazing features. Um, and actually, I actually have to do the, uh, the super satisfying, let's see if I can get this, this plastic peel that I just noticed I have not yet taken off. Perfect. So, um, I'm sure, I'm sure there's something, oh, one thing I did forget to mention was uh, the reverse function worked instantly for me. Um, there weren't actually any extra uh, wiring I had to do because the, the, the harness that from the stock harness, um, there is a pin that goes straight into the back of this um, that the that it uses. So I didn't have to do any extra wiring. I just literally plugged in the normal, I forget what pin it was. It was like the eight pin or six pin, I think, uh, from the stock back into the back of this and it worked instantly. Um, the one thing that about this that is kind of interesting is it, the backup camera kind of looks a little grainy, but I realize it's because the, the, audio, the video feed is probably in 480p or 720p or something like that um and it was it looked okay on the old subaru screen because the screen was smaller and it was probably lower resolution so that when you scale up that lower quality video feed from the the stock camera it probably looks a little grainy on uh, this screen because it's so high quality, but um, it's very very clear. It's super easy to see it has the stock lines that are very accurate in my opinion, so um, I am completely happy with this Instantly goes back just like normal um, Honestly if You guys are in the market for a aftermarket head unit Definitely consider I doing um, I know that the concerns with this kind of head unit is that they're just not gonna last over time, but with this specific company, I've seen many, many different uh, reviews online where people are saying that, you know, they are lasting online and they are. So uh, big shout out to iDoing for, for making this super seamless unit. Um, you don't have to modify anything on your interior and you can return back to stock if you, if you need to. Um, yeah, honestly, so happy with this product. Uh, turned out amazing and these speakers just sound 20 times better so that's where i'll leave you guys for this week thank you so much for watching um if you have not yet please hit that subscribe button um, if you made it to the end of this video actually um did you know that 80 percent of the people watching our videos um or pretty much close to 80 percent of the people watching our videos aren't actually subscribed and so just a couple of you guys from that group hit, hit that subscribe button we'll be growing more and more and we'll be able to be making and putting out more content so um if you guys haven't yet please hit the subscribe button thank you so much for for, for supporting us and uh we will see you next week